<clears throat> okay, let's dive into the weeds on the topic of soy. I have been invited in the past on various vegan podcasts, and then I've been uninvited when they found out that I'm not a fan of soy. For, so for some reason, there's like a, the zealotry in the vegan community about soy that goes beyond the scientific research. But I want to talk about the research and be pretty open-minded here and explain what I think is going on, starting with a little bit of depth regarding estrogen. So estrogen is more complicated than testosterone. A lot of people don't realize, you know, when you have testosterone in your body, there's an androgen receptor that picks it up. Very simple. Testosterone sticks to this receptor. Your body picks it up. Your cells pick it up. Well, with estrogen, there's actually three different estrogens naturally in your body, maybe four, maybe five, maybe a bunch, but there's three main ones, estrone, estriol, and estradiol. So it's already more complicated than testosterone, but there's two receptors that pick up estrogen. There's one called estrogen receptor alpha, and then the other one's called estrogen receptor beta. And alpha is generally only activated during sexual development. You're not supposed to be activating your estrogen receptor alpha throughout the, your whole life. You'll increase risk of breast cancer for women, prostate cancer for men, all kinds of health problems. You don't want to be activating alpha. Alpha is considered the bad one when you're an adult. Now beta, on the other hand, estrogen receptor beta would be considered the good one. It actually protects against breast cancer. It's protective against prostate cancer. Again, it's the good one. And when you look on Wikipedia, for example, you kind of see that reflected. When you're looking at estrogen receptor alpha, you scroll down to a section that says agonists, ligands. Agonists, of course, means activators, things that activate your estrogen receptor. And of course, the natural estrogens do that. And then there's a few other ag agonists, activators, and antagonist blockers but not a ton of them. Now, when you go over to estrogen receptor beta and you do the same exercise, agonists, of course, the natural estrogens are on there too, but then you'll see a huge list of agonists. Why? Because scientists are oftentimes trying to activate the beta receptor. You're making artificial drugs and things. That's why so many of these have weird names like ACE-186 or DCW234 or whatever, those are those chemicals are probably patented and they don't wanna tell you the actual chemical structure. They're trying to make it a drug. So it's a secret formula. And of course they have a lot of these and some of them like apigenin um, and equal might have uses for example, maybe vingenistine in certain situations. But the point is estrogen has two receptors and let's just say for simplicity, one's bad and one's good. Again, that's not really true because you need them both. One's for sexual development and things. But let's just say as an adult, one's bad, one's good. Alpha, bad, beta, good for this discussion. Now, when you talk about soy, um, soy has a couple of different estrogenic chemicals. One's called genistein and one's called isoflavone. Now, isoflavone, I mean, let's look at a review here. Um, phytoestrogens are naturally occurring you know, but they look like steroids in your body. They resemble estrogen. They're, your body perceives them as estrogen. And this review focuses on isoflavones, which are very estrogenic. They're the nasty ones. And the main sources are soy products. And that's one thing that scientists all agree on is that soy acts like estrogen. Nobody's disagreeing with that. Let's at least start there and say, look, Soy is going to act like estrogen in your body. Um, whether that's bad or good, sure, let's argue about that. Let's discuss that. But soy acts like estrogen. In fact, in Canada, they did a study of 121 food items. And I mean, just a laundry list of food items. They have these charts here, just tons of different things they were looking at. But if you look at soy specifically, and whether it's soy bacon bits or whether it's soy protein or soy milk or whatever, these soy products have tons of isoflavone and tons of genistein too, if you look at the GEN, genistein, but um, thousands of units of estrogen. And then interesting, just as a little aside here, soy sauce, which is actually fermented, only has like 100 units, 115 units of estrogen. So it's not that estrogenic because the fermentation, the bacteria can break down those estrogens. Again, a little aside, it's important to know that if you're eating soy sauce, you're not actually dosing yourself with estrogen, but if you're eating soy bacon bits or something like that, you actually are. And it compared to like 
don't know, cabbage, uh, you got what, 0.9 units, carrots, I mean, just a tiny amount, right? 0.2, you got corn, you got all kinds of plants that, I mean, the units are just minuscule compared to soy. Um, now, again, the real argument then is whether it's bad estrogen or good estrogen. The argument's not whether it's estrogen, it's whether it's bad or good. Now, if you go to a vegan, a very prominent vegan named Michael Greger, who, by the way, looks like he has sarcopenia, that's muscle wasting. Um, it doesn't look healthy to me, but you can be the judge of that. And of course, I can't find a shirtless picture of him, but I mean, <laughs> no problem, like I don't blame him for that. But if you watch his video here, he lays out the argument why he thinks soy is great for you. And basically, it, because it activates the beta receptor preferentially, he's going to say. The mystery was solved when we discovered there are two types of estrogen receptors in the body. And so how a target cell responds depends on which type of estrogen receptors they have. This may be the key to understanding the health protective potential of soy phytoestrogens, the existence of this newly discovered estrogen receptor called estrogen receptor beta, to distinguish it from the classic estrogen receptor alpha. So let's see what that means for estrogen receptor activation. This is the graph that explains the mysterious health benefits of soy foods. Down around the effective levels you get uh, eating a cup of soybeans, there's very little alpha activation, but lots of beta activation. All right, so that's fine. That's a good argument. But when you actually look at the study, by the way, um, it's a little bit more complicated. Here's the study. Um, we're looking at alpha and beta activation. And here's the actual graph. It's definitely not quite as clean and neat. I'm glad he cleaned it up, he made it look neat, but he also kind of exaggerated the features of this graph. If you actually spell it out here, you'll see that here's the alpha, here's the beta receptor, and honestly, it's pretty similar if you draw out the genistein, that's the soy estrogen, and just look at the, the activation of that alpha receptor, it's pretty high, and then you look at the beta receptor, and yeah, it's pretty high. It's it's pretty comparable, to, to, to be honest. I mean, for just one random person, you know, they're just looking at this Japanese cell from Ishikawa, probably just a person's cells, honestly. Um, and then what's especially interesting and even more nuanced and, and valuable here is if you look at another figure in that same exact paper, it looks like alpha is even more activated than beta. So in other words, the bad receptor is more active than the good receptor from soy. So there's a mixed bag here. And that's kind of what the authors conclude in the study. They're like, well, you know, it's estrogenic. There's kind of a, you know, some nuance here. We haven't fully revealed all the information. I mean, that's, that's what they found. Um, so that wasn't super definitive, but now in 2021, if we're looking at, um, meta-analysis of all the studies and whether testosterone is affected from soy intake and especially especially isoflavone intake they argue no it doesn't feminize men and it doesn't lower testosterone um, no significant effects of soy protein soy isoflavone so um, that's what the researchers are concluding now that it does not lower testosterone but if you switch over to women, you do see in certain situations, again, they did a recent review, 2020, another meta-analysis. Now, these women had polycystic ovarian syndrome, so they were checking their blood. Um, and then they tested soy on these ones, and it actually did decrease their testosterone. So maybe there's an argument in women it lowers testosterone, in men it doesn't. But I think, here's my honest take on this, is that we're not just being exposed to soy estrogens in our environments. We're being exposed to plastic estrogens. We're being exposed to sunscreen estrogens, personal care product estrogens, uh, herbicides like atrazine and glyphosate, all these different chemicals that are acting like estrogen in our body. And our culture is chronically low on testosterone. That's also pretty well established. We have incredibly low testosterone in the, in the past 50 years. It's just gone down and down and down. Actually, in the past 100 years, to be honest. But especially it's tanked in the last 50 years. And so what I think was happening is that's clouding out the research on soy because everybody's testosterone is so low, it's already pretty much bottomed out. And then you add some soy in there and you're not going further than bottoming out. Um, but again, you know, 
whether you think that or not, I mean, maybe you think it doesn't affect you. It also might affect how much receptors you have to testosterone and how sensitive you are to testosterone, not just the blood level. So maybe the blood levels stay the same, but your sensitivity to testosterone is shut down. There's a lot of potential things here that could be problematic, but if you love soy and you love soy products and you know, you're all about it, I give it, you know, I, I, I give you total free reign, like to ignore what I'm saying here, but me personally, I'm avoiding soy because it acts like estrogen. We have plenty of estrogen in our culture today. We don't need more estrogens in our system. And therefore, if you want to also avoid estrogens, I recommend avoiding soy and soy products, unless they're fermented.